The International Association for Near-Death Studies presents NDE Radio, a weekly exploration of near-death experiences and similar encounters with the other side. Now, here's your host, Lee Whitting. Does it seem even possible that someone who has died can return like Marley's ghost to tell us about ourselves in the hereafter? As a chaplain, I hear almost every day of the signs and signals families receive after a loved one has passed on. Something that seems to connect powerfully with family members to tell them that deceased loved one is okay. Is it our wishful thinking that lends power to such communications? Or are these messages really as meaningful as they seem? Welcome to NDE Radio, brought to you by IANS, the International Association for Near-Death Studies. I'm your host, Lee Whitting. Messages from those who have passed on are far more common than most people believe. Among the stories I've heard from families are electrical phenomena, such as light switches turning on and off by themselves, or a special species of bird or butterfly showing up at a window to say goodbye. One woman told me as she sat in a chair grieving the loss of her husband, his picture fell off the wall and landed on her lap. A good friend of mine has shown me a photo she took in which her late father was clearly apparent, even though he was invisible to her when she snapped the picture. And frankly, I've had such experiences, such as the spirit of a good friend putting her hand firmly on my shoulder to say goodbye. What does it all mean? Our guest today is Christine Dominiak, who also has had an extraordinary experience that manifested in a life-changing course in her life's direction. Christine is a certified grief recovery specialist and author of Heaven Talks to Children, Afterlife Contacts, Spiritual Gifts and Loving Messages, and God's Gift of Love, After Death Communications. Christine is a member of the Association for Death Education and Counseling and founder of Prayer Wave for After Death Communication. She is a radio co-host of Ask the Angels on Blog Talk Radio and a contributing writer for the Open to Open Foundation, Open to Hope Foundation. Christine, welcome to NDE Radio. Thank you, Lee. It's so wonderful to be here. And uh, Christine, tell us, tell our audience what launched you into this career. Okay. Well, when anyone ever mentioned anything about afterlife signs, My eyes would glaze over, Lee, because I never had one. I didn't really care about them, and I couldn't wrap my brain around it. But in 1998, something really wild happened in our bedroom one night. My husband's dead parents showed up in my bedroom and stayed for an hour. Now, um, prior to their visiting that evening, I had it was around 4 in the morning, And I woke up from a dream, and I looked around the room to see what time it was. It was four, as I mentioned. And I noticed a man in the room, and he was dressed in a red cloak with a black padre type of a hat, like an Italian priest would wear. And Mm -hmm. he was sitting at a desk, very serene. His hands were uh, in a prayer type of a um, motion, uh, reading a book. And he was sitting at a desk but he was suspended in space near my ceiling. (laughs) So I thought, I guess I'm dreaming, and I kept blinking my eyes, waiting for him to go away. And after about 15 long seconds, he finally dissipated into a a misty haze. And uh, I thought, oh, my goodness, what is this? And I noticed there were some other spirits in the room. Uh, They were a little scary. Uh, They did not look peaceful like this particular priest did. So I grabbed my rosaries from under my pillow, and I started praying. And the next thing I know, the whole room turns blue with white, twinkling lights going through them, and I heard papers rustling on my desk as this happened. And then I saw a figure of a woman with a white veil over her head. She looked similar to the way the women dressed in the days when Jesus Christ walked the earth. And she was over my doorway just for a brief second, just to almost to let me know that everything was safe and peaceful now and not to worry. And as soon as I saw her, I felt complete peace. And I started to to think about, well, what's going on? And I could think about it in a very calm manner. And I now I noticed there were other spirits in the room. They weren't scary, but they were kind of, uh, uh, they weren't really that uh, definitive in shape. So 
So I started to think, well, who would want to visit me? I wasn't grieving anyone. Uh, All my family were still alive. No close friends had passed. And then it occurred to me that my husband's father, John, who had passed about 11 years prior to this, uh, my husband took it so hard. Um, It was really so sad to see him grieve the way that he did for so long. So I just had this thought, I bet it's John. So I, I called out, John, is that you? And the next thing I knew, one of the spirits that were kind of uh, hazy from, went from the foot of my bed right in front of my face and took on a very definitive shape. And he was wearing a black fedora hat, a black suit coat, a white shirt, a black and white striped tie, and a little hanky, white hanky in his pocket. I could see him from the, from the waist up, and he was semi-transparent. And I thought, oh, my gosh, John is here. I can't believe this. So uh, then I thought, well, John used to always uh, do everything with his wife, Stella. They were very close. So I said, well, is Stella here, too? Now, here I am, Lee, having a conversation with dead people, (laughs) my my first (laughs) ever. (laughs) So uh, anyway, uh, next thing I know, another figure floats in front of John and she had on a, a flappers type hat that the women of the 20s era w- would be wearing. She had on red lipstick and white pearls around her neck. And I, I thought, oh my gosh. And she was floating in front of John. Then I had the presence of mind to think, oh my goodness, my husband's parents are here and he's sound asleep beside me and he's missing the whole show. So I woke him up and I said, Bob, Bob, your parents are here. Your parents are here. And I pointed to where they were and He did not have the ability to see them, but that night, God had given me the ability to see uh, my husband's parents. But it was so sweet because my husband, I could tell he believed me because I saw his lips moving to talk to them. And Mm -hmm. um, after a while, I couldn't hear anything that they had to say. Uh, I didn't have that ability that evening, but I had the ability to see them. And after about an hour, uh, my husband had fallen back to sleep, and I was getting so tired and I, I said, well, I, I, ha- I have to go. I'm sorry. I'm falling back to sleep. And I thanked them for coming, and I waved goodbye, and they waved back. It was really incredible. And the next morning, you can imagine how excited I was explaining all this to my husband, exactly what happened. And uh, But it didn't stop there, Lee. They started coming a few times a week, and I didn't know why. And I started to get a little scared. I thought perhaps this is a health warning because my husband did have had cancer in the past, and we thought it was caught at an early stage. But I thought, well, perhaps it's coming back. Why else would they be coming all the time? So I went on a quest to find out what this was all about, and I found that my experience was called an after-death communication, an ADC, where you mm-hmm. have a direct and spontaneous uh, visit from a deceased family member or friend without the use of mediums or psychics or rituals or devices. And it, it led me to find out uh, I, I did have a, uh, a, a spiritual session with a, a Christian medium, something that I never would have considered doing in the past, but she was recommended by Judith Guggenheim, co-author of Hello from Heaven. I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with that book. And yes. uh, so I stepped out of, outside of my comfort zone to, to to talk to this Christian medium, and um, I felt very comfortable since I was a Catholic with her, and um, uh, and so we had a, a session with my guardian angel who explained that I was going to be helping people spiritually, emotionally, and eventually with the gift of touch healing, and he said, um, do you accept this mission from God? And I said, God wants me to do this? And he said, yes. I said, well, what fool is going to say no to God? No to God. I said, you know, I read the Old Testament. So I said, sign me up. And my life has never been the same since then. I I got into the field of um, hand and foot reflexology and to to try and use the gift of touch healing. And um, I noticed God kept sending me people who were grieving. And, um, you know, I would pray for them, and I'd ask them, did they have any signs or anything, which they seemed so relieved to talk about, because it was as if they had, they were keeping a secret inside and wondering if it was a true visit or were they imagining it. And then I found myself getting into spiritual bereavement support, and um, I noticed that those who were getting signs were 
they, they were just so more positive and they had such a joyful heart because they felt that they'd be getting a sign sometime in the future. And they knew that their loved one had not gone off into a black hole and they were still connected to them and, and still a part of their lives. But I was also coming across so many people who were desperate to get a sign. It was really sad. It really broke my heart to see how they were suffering uh, because this was now two years later and my own dad had passed and I was getting so many wonderful signs from him that I was always going around with a smile on my face because there were so many wonderful signs. And I wanted that for other people. I wanted them to feel the joy. So I really believed in the power of group prayer and I formed a a group called Prayer Way for After Death Communication where we would actually pray for people to get a sign from their loved ones. And I have a message board that does that. And uh, we now have 22 con- people who are from 22 different countries who are members of it. And every Friday is Prayer Way Friday. Well, over time, the, the prayer was really showing to work because our group was getting an abundance of signs, Lee. And even those who were, who were never getting signs, who were desperately wanting them, were finally getting signs. And I was getting letters from people who had thoughts of committing suicide because they were so grief-stricken and they were in such a deep and dark place. But once they came to our group and we prayed for them and they started to get signs, their whole lives turned around and they lost all uh, thoughts of suicide. And at the time, I did not know that they were thinking about suicide. It was only later when they were healing that I got these letters from them telling me what a difference it made in their lives. And getting to go on, knowing that their loved one was still a part of their life. So that night that my in-laws showed up in my bedroom was a a transformational moment for me and I think for so many other people to understand that their loved ones are still a huge part of their lives. They come to all those important occasions. They never miss birthdays or or anniversaries or weddings or uh, the birth of their child, which is some of the things are some of the things that haunt people after the physical loss of their loved one. They, they understand now from the signs that they get at those important moments in their lives that they're with them enjoying it. And it makes all the difference in the world to know that they're still connected to you. Oh, yes. Well, it's, I think it's commonly understood that uh, grief brings on stress and stress brings on illness. And, um, Certainly, I've seen an awful lot of cases where people who were married for a long time, when the first uh, person in the couple dies, within six months, the second one will, too. And it may just be a, as a result of the stress bringing on illness. Really? I'm being heartbroken, I think. I, I think mm. if there's something... I, I, really exactly right. Exactly right. I, uh, it's very uh, coincidental. I was traveling back from uh, an IONS board meeting in Durham, North Carolina, on the plane... Yesterday, I sat next to a woman who uh, told me that uh, her uh, brother had committed suicide, and she'd had a long visit from him after that, and he'd come and explain to her the reasons he'd made such a bad decision. And uh, that visit proved to be such a terrific comfort to her, to her and her family. So I'm wondering, how often do these things happen? Well, the, you know, the, researchers in this field estimate that that millions of people receive them, and um, but they usually keep them close to the vest because mm-hmm. it's not such an accepted mainstream um, phenomena. Uh, and so people who are not familiar with this uh, paranormal event um, kind of like look at you like you're crazy or hallucinating, similar to what I was, uh, you know, used to think when people would tell me about... Um, such a uh, an experience that went, went on in their lives. So they're not that forthcoming. Now, my, my message board and my, I also have a Facebook uh, a page now, a group called After Death Communication and Prayer Wave, where people can come to a safe environment and share it with someone because many times in their lives they have no one to share it with because uh, they don't want to be considered crazy. <laughs> so right, there right. are safe places to go, and I'm noticing there's more and more groups on the Internet that are safe places to go for people who experience this. And and it, it just makes all the difference in the world when you realize that they're still connected to you and um, just the joy in one's heart every time they get a sign is amazing. It's amazing. It's really gratifying. It, it's very powerful and uh, and it's very healing. 
It's it's quite remarkable. Now, the fact that uh, you feel God told you to do this must mean that God wants people to be more in touch with uh, with relatives and loved ones who who have predeceased them. I absolutely believe so, uh, Lee, because um, I consider our loved ones, especially if they're around a lot, uh, to be part of your angel team. Uh, they're there to help you, guide you, and I firmly believe that spirits in heaven only do what God sends them to do, gives them permission to do. They're not uh, rogue agents, rogue spirits in heaven. So if they are contacting you, it's only with God's permission uh, that they're doing this, and it's a good thing. And, and sometimes people who um, are very religious worry that if their loved ones are contacting them that perhaps they haven't gone on to the light. But what I have uh, re- found in my work and my studies is that it's only after they go to heaven and that they meet up with God and they're on the heavenly realms that they are allowed to come back and give us comforting signs. So, And it's always about comfort. God sends them to comfort us, um, not to uh, cause us stress. It's the very opposite. And um, speaking along those lines, lots of times people will get dreams, bad dreams of their loved ones, where their loved one may look like that they're in pain or they're lost or they're bleeding or ignoring them, maybe like a spouse being with another woman. And what I have to say about that is that this is not the true spirit of your loved one when this happens. And God does not send them to cause us angst like that. That's from the other side. So if that is happening to people, if they start to every night faithfully pray for God's holy protection before they go to bed at night and do this routinely every night, they will notice that 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 type of dream will stop happening and the good dreams of their loved ones where they're offering love and comfort replaces the, the dark dreams that they're getting. So, and this especially happens to very vulnerable people, and and that's why they really need to know to protect themselves before they go to bed at night. Because when you are in that dreamlight state or twilight state, half awake, half asleep, is when it's very easy for all manner of spirits to visit us. So you want the good guys uh, to visit you and your loved ones, the good guys, and uh, God's Holy Spirit to visit us at that point. So by saying a prayer of protection, you can really you know, get rid of the bad and just have the good experiences that you want. Yes. Have you had an, any uh, conversations, you said you were Catholic, with okay. uh, members of the church, your, your local priest or someone, of, to get their reaction to what you're doing? Uh, yes, I have. In fact, my husband's brother was a faithful priest for 50 years until he died um, a few years ago. And I used to talk to him about this. And he, because in the seminary, they're really not instructed about good spirits visiting us. Um, they are instructed about saints, of course. I mean, Catholic Church, we're, we're known for all our formal saints. And so it's not out of the realm of possibility that, that saints or spirits will come back to visit us. And, um, and he was worried that, uh, you know, maybe the contact I was getting from his own parents were, um, you know, I was being fooled, but I knew how I learned from this Christian spiritual medium how to protect myself. Her name is Sunny Wells, by the way, and she's also mm-hmm. an author. And um, she's the co-host with me on, on the blog talk radio show that we have. And I learned how to, to do this very effectively to weed out the good from the bad. And you, you can actually see them dis- dis- dissolve right in front of your eyes if you call mm-hmm. on Jesus uh, and, and bind and rebuke Satan. That's that's how our angels taught her. So, uh, so yes, but he didn't understand that you could really effectively protect yourself if you're being visited by spirits, and it's important for people to know who are having that uh, that experience. But he was, after a while, became a champion of mine because when he retired um, and he went into a, a retirement home for priests, he started selling my book. <laughs> To the other retired priest, <laughs> the, the first man got to give the love after death communication. So, I, so I think he was okay with it after a while. But um, a lot of Catholics do not know that the Vatican actually uh, there's an article uh, that I have on my website. It's uh, about the Vatican's take that they do believe 
that our loved ones can communicate with us uh, after they pass on. And uh, I showed this article to a number of priests, including my brother-in-law, and they had no idea that the Vatican's take was so positive on this. Uh, and mm. so I think it, it is a help to them in their work with other people who may be having these experiences. Although the Vatican is still not, is not, does not acknowledge that mediums are given a gift from the Holy Spirit, but I'm not really talking about that. I'm really talking about contact from your loved one, not, not as a medium or a psychic. So, yeah, so that is a, that's quite uh, eye-opening that the Vatican does acknowledge this, and I love that they do because... Um, people who keep wondering, well, you know, am I going against God? Uh, well, now we'll feel better about the experiences that they have. Well, I think this is very important because uh, uh, so many people do worry and, in fact, don't even talk about, say, their near-death experiences because they think that it's somehow in contradiction with what they've been taught by the Catholic Church or Protestant denominations. Right. And so it's it's wonderful. In fact, why don't you right now give... Um, uh, the audience, uh, your your website address so they can find that article and read it. Sure. It's um, christinedominiac.com. That's C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-E-D-U-M-I-N-I-A-K.com with a www before it. And, right. they'll be and I'm sure they'll... I was going to say, I'm sure they'll find other very interesting things on your website as well. Yes, I have listed the, the 20 common types of after-death communications that people send to us or use to give us. And so that's on the same page, too. So I, I think that'll be very helpful for people. And also people uh, about dream visits. Many people so long for a dream visit. And I have give, I've given tips on my website how to get a comforting dream visit from your loved one. And I always say, if you want any kind of a sign, whether it's dream or whatever, to go to God first. It's really a two-step process. Go to God first and ask him to allow your loved one to visit you because all our blessings come from God and he's in charge. And secondly, then state something specific that you would recognize uh, to your loved one. For instance, um, you could say uh, to your, your mother, please send me a butterfly so I know this is a sign from you. And if you say that specifically to your loved one, when you get that butterfly, you'll know that your prayer has been answered. And if you if you say thank you and you claim that particular sign that, that you've received, they will repeat their signs because they know that you will get it. And that's what they want. They want It's a gift from God and from them, and so they want you to accept the gift, to notice the gift, and to say thank you. And if you do, you'll, you'll get more signs. And uh, that's, that's what God wants for people. Yes, when you recognize that that was, in fact, a communication, then it enables more communication down the line. I had uh, someone, speaking of butterflies, who told me the other day about uh, someone who died that loved, that person just loved butterflies. And uh, shortly after the death of, uh, a very rare species of butterfly flew into their room and flew oh. around the room, and, the, oh, wow. and they just knew that that, that yeah that it was a sign. It was yeah, yeah. And, and you know, was, I, I, I was going to say, Christine. Also, I, probably you find this in grief counseling as well. That as a chaplain, I find that these stories, even if the person themselves uh, themselves haven't experienced or, or are reluctant to experience something. Just hearing about somebody else's experience with a sign is a very powerful tool for uh, healing the grieving process. Absolutely. I, I've even found that in my own family. Um, I have two other sisters, and one never believed in the signs that our dad was sending us after he passed. And my mother and I used to sit and chat and loved it. And uh, my sister would would walk out of the room when this would happen, and my mother prayed for her like crazy to get to open up. And finally she went to, uh, it was the first Easter since my dad passed, and she went to the grave site and she said, Daddy, Daddy, just please talk to me, talk to me. And she heard, take care of your mom, take care of your mom, take care of your mom. <laughs> and it starts, <laughs> to, whoa, and it starts to open her up. <laughs> but my other sister, um, who believes in signs, is terrified of a- any any 
anybody contacting her spirit. So she often, she'll say, please don't give me any signs, uh, mommy, daddy. Uh, I just, uh, it'll scare the heck out of me. But she enjoys listening to the signs that I get and that my sister gets uh, because she understands that they're with us but and she can enjoy it knowing that they're still around. But yet, as you said, there are some people who don't want to get them and my sister is one of those type of people but enjoys immensely hearing about all the different signs. So it's comforting to them right. also. Hey, hey. I think uh, I think the, the main message behind these things is um, the deceased person is saying, I love you, and I want you to channel that love through to the rest of the people that, that I love. And so by getting a sign or a symbol or a message like that, if you're open to it and if you're open to um, continuing it on through, uh, then, you, then you're sharing love that they can no longer express in life. Yes, and also I believe some people think, well, why did not did they not come to me? Why did they come to my sister or my niece? Or, and it's because right. Why, they, why didn't why didn't uh, why didn't they come to your husband who was asleep instead of right. talking to you, for instance? Right. But he. Well, I believe I was meant to be in this field, and he wasn't. So, but mm-hmm. and that's why it was a catalyst for me. But also, they go to the person who is who can uh, is the most open, or maybe has a little bit of a gift. Uh, some way that they can get through, and the message that they're sending is meant for all their loved ones, not just for that one individual. So they go to the person who can receive the easiest. So it's always meant to be shared with everyone else. It's not that they love that person more than they love you. It's just that they, it's easier for them to get through to that person. And maybe if you were in such deep grief, you cannot, you put up a wall and it's hard for them to get through to you even though they want to. So that's why they'll go to the person who is easier to receive. But the message is always meant to be spread to everyone that they're alive, they love us, and they're with us. And don't be sad. Don't be sad. They still live on and they're still a part of our lives. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now tell me a little about your radio show. Uh, what's the content of that? Um, it is, uh, it's about uh, well, this is probably, probably some of your audience may not believe in this, but uh, my Christian spiritual friend, uh, Sonny Wells, um, it's a special opportunity for people to ask the angels questions about what, what heaven is like and uh, all, all different questions that come to mind. And it's, uh, she's, she received her gift when she asked to be in service to Christ and uh, as an adult. And um, and so she does this grief support work, but also it gives the angels a voice, too. And um, so, you know, some people uh, really love that kind of thing. And it's not about channeling loved ones. It's about um, teaching people who have very, very many questions about uh, God, heaven, hell, whatever, whatever floats your boat. It's an opportunity mm-hmm. to ask the angels questions, so that's what that's about. But and also, people who are grieving do come because they want to know what what it's like for their loved ones and about uh, our spiritual agreements with God before we come to Earth, and which many times are talked about in near death experiences. By the way, as you as you well know, that you know we all have missions and lessons to learn on Earth, and um, that's why we're here to bring us to hopefully successfully complete them, and be closer to God in the end when we return back home. So that's, that's right. Okay. Well, Christine, I'm, I'm afraid we're just about out of time here, but uh, my thanks to you for uh, today's edition of INS NDE Radio. And, Thank um, you for having if, me. <laughs> if people would uh, like to um, uh, find out a little more about you, they can go to our website or... Uh, uh, let me give your website again, uh, or why don't you go ahead and do that? It's just www.christineduminiac.com. If you just put a search in for my name, it'll come right up. Very good. So there's a lot of Thanks, Christine. Thank you, Lee. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, if you'd like to hear this program again or any others on our archive shows, just go to our website, nderadio.org. For more information about IANS, our services, and news about near-death experience, please go to our website at iands.org. And join us next Monday, 11 a.m. Eastern, for more NDE Radio. Thanks for listening. 